So, I am a huge Harry Potter fan. It's, I mean, if you can't tell. So naturally, when I heard about Cursed Child the first time, I was super excited. And I also got the book the day it came out, July 31st. And I just read through it basically in one setting in a few hours and I have some thoughts about it that I want to tell you I'm, I'm not quite as excited as I was when I first heard about it. But before we go any further, I just want to state that one, huge Harry Potter fan, I read all the books in both Danish and English several times through. Second, I don't normally enjoy reading scripts as much as I do when I read um, normal books, so that's something to bear in mind. And three, there won't be any major pod spoilers, I'm gonna avoid those as best as I can, but since my opinions about this book is gonna be in this video, if you'd rather read the book before hearing whatever anybody else thinks, you can get your own opinion without being influenced by others, which is what I did. I stayed off all internet until I read it through. Then then go go read it and then make your opinion. Come back, watch my opinion, and then let me know how those two opinions match up against each other. Okay, good first off. So this book, Cursed Child, a quick quick one through of like the major outline of the plot is starts off where the seventh book leaves off Harry, Ginny, saying goodbye to Albus, about to leave for his first year of school. Basically, it's an estranged father-son relationship going on. Harry and Albus are not the best of friends, and we kind of go through the first three years really quickly and establish that. Establish that. Albus and his new friend Scorpius, Draco Malfoy's son, get the chance to travel back in time, and they do so, and because of the butterfly effect, which is the time travel theory which is being used, they kind of kind of fuck up the future and we see some alternative versions of what their life would be if they had succeeded with what they are going back to do. And then there's a major plot, another major plot twist, which I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about because spoilers. It's written by this guy named Jack Thorne, as you can see in the bottom here. It's not written by J.K. Rowling herself. It is based on an original story by her and John Tiffany and Jack Thorne and then Jack went off and wrote the words. My biggest thing with reading this book was that the characters didn't really always feel true to themselves. And by the characters, I mean the old characters who we know pretty well after seven books. There were several times where I felt like some lines they were saying wouldn't be something they would have said in a, a proper Harry Potter book and story. And I just found myself making this face oh. several times as I was reading it through. And it kind of pulled me away from the story a bit. Uh, unfortunately, f for me at least, this hit the original female characters the most. Especially there's a moment between McGonagall and Hermione, which just seems very wrong. There's some disrespectful language going on. Not like highly, but low-key disrespectful language, and I feel like Hermione wouldn't do that to McGonagall. So that's probably my my biggest thing, and I think it goes back to, like I said, Rowling didn't write this. Jack Thorne did, and it's Jack Thorne's words in her Rowling's character's mouths. And I felt it a lot throughout the book, that it wasn't her words, the words that we're used to hearing. My second thing, is Albus and Scorpius are supposed to be like 13, 14 year olds when this story takes place. And they don't really feel that age. They feel a bit too mature with their considerations of the things that's going on, how they think and talk about problems, and especially how they talk about their feelings towards each other. They have a couple of heart to hearts talking about basically apologizing for some things and how much they love being friends. And just knowing the, the other Harry Potter books, the way the boys in those books would interact, this does not fit. And the third thing was the plot. The whole timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly ball of stuff. Did not quite feel like a Harry Potter plot, to be honest. There are some plot holes, which when you read the book or see the play, you'll, you'll discover. 
you will know what I'm talking about. I'm not gonna say it because of spoilers. There's a pretty major plot thing that most Potter fans, I think, would find kind of hard to believe. It kind of feels like they took the the time traveling from the third book and then just kind of made it bigger. And it, it's a little confusing. Uh, there's actually a point in it where I'm kind of confused how they jump in time. Maybe I just didn't read carefully enough. But it's basically the, the third plot but on crack. I know a lot of people found the third book to be kind of the odd one out because of the time travel and confusing because of the back and forth. So it kind of seems weird to me that they would take that idea and put it into the, the eighth story as they call it. Also, personally, because it's been so long and it's, it's a new medium, I would have liked it to be more like classic Harry Potter and spend a bit more time at Hogwarts and, and school, so at least there would be some familiar setting, which they do have a little bit of, but not a lot. And and of course in this way they, they get to showcase the, the adults, like Ron, Harry, Hermione, their Ginny, their everyday life a bit more, which is nice to know kind of what goes on and, and how their relationships have stayed or changed. Also, some of the things happen very quick. I, it feels a little bit rushed, and this may be because it's a script and we're used to I'm, well, we're used to reading very detailed books and where you get every thought and every every setting is explained, which of course you don't do in scripts because that's not how they work. But I feel like a lot of stuff happens it, and it, some of it happens quite quickly. All this being said though, it's quite clear that since it is a script, I think good actors could definitely lift this story and make it more enjoyable for me. I think because I read it, I n notice these things more because you can kind of go back and you can stop and think before you move on. But had I seen it, I don't think it would have jumped out as much. And I really, I, I do want to see it. I don't have tickets now. I hope they either A, extend it or B, film it because I really do want to see it. Also because there's a lot of magic in here and, and as a theater person I'd like to know how they're gonna do those things. That's just interesting. Overall, it was, it was a good read. It's a good story. I just feel like Harry Potter is normally such a high standard and such great and fantastic stories that it didn't quite live up to it. I do like Albus, I do like Scorpius as characters. I just, again, don't really feel like they were age appropriate. I'm happy we have new material. I wish that it was written by J.K. Rowling and not by someone else. I feel like I can feel that it's it's not her words. But yeah, if you've read it or if you read it, uh, please let me know what you think. Do, do you agree? Do you not agree? Let's have a lovely discussion about this book play, because I'm always down for discussions about books, especially if it's Harry Potter. Also, if anyone wants any specific examples of what I'm talking about, it, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll write it to you, either like page or the passage or something, and then just be aware that that might be spoilers in the comments if you're watching this and you haven't read the book. Which also means if you're, if you're gonna talk specifics about the books in the comments, Please tag your spoilers, just be like, hey, spoiler alert, and then, and then go. I think that's all I have to say. Until, until next time, have a, have a fantastic day, week, month, life. Keep being magical. Bye.